come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast that comes ever, uh, comes at you every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we'll watch the movie. That Colin! Yes, yeah, Sean. We have watched another Jalo tonight. Another one. Mm. So quickly on the heels of the last one. Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah, it was, it was his last pick. Was it? Yeah, torso. Oh. No, right? it did the X Files. But X Files. That's uh, right. Then, uh, before that was yeah, torso. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What do we watch tonight? Uh, tonight we watched another one, and it was called Blood and Black Lace. Blood and Black Lace. Uh-huh. I keep wanting to call it Blood on Black Lace or Blood in and. Black yeah. Lace. Blood, blood or Blood or Black Lace. Your yeah. choice. Oh, uh, we yeah. come covered in blood or Black Lace. Uh, yeah. Which I mean, that's a great theme party. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. I wonder what oh, people would let's come have as. A blood and black lace party that would right? be really. Fun. I know you should. I'm coming yeah. as blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Directed by. Oh, uh, well, well, from the year what is, what is 1964. 64. This is yeah. an early one, and it's directed by Mario Bava. Bava. And so we've talked about him on several episodes we in have. the past. When's so, the last time we had him here? Um, I think it was Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath. I think so. Was right. that the last time? No. Well, we talked about him. I uh, think so. Uh, that was a while ago. Several yeah. times. Uh, well, yeah. Well, we've also, uh, so we're putting him on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame tonight mm. because we've watched at least three of his Black movies. Black Sabbath, this movie, yeah. and Danger Diabolic. Uh, you remember that one? None of us uh, were here for that. Way back. Yes. Oh, okay. You weren't even there. Okay. Nope. All right. <laughs> well, so there you go. <laughs> Um. So yeah, Italian Jello movies. Here we are again. Are you guys sick of them yet? I, I was kind of glad you picked another one because Torso reinvigorated my interest in Giallo. And like, I did a uh, Giallo drawing in between the last time we watched Torso and this. And I was actually like looking up clips from this movie for reference for that. And I was like, maybe I should rewatch it again. And I almost did. So I'm glad you picked it because I was like on the verge of rewatching Blood and Black Lace. But yeah. yeah, sometimes you get the Giallo itch, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm just glad it's done by somebody different this time. Yes. And it's not Argento. Right. Again. It's nice just to branch so- out. Right. We have somebody else to talk about a little bit. Yeah. Cause that was, I guess, uh, for the listeners at home, if you haven't been following along, we've done a bunch of Dario Argento movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, Indeed. And we keep talking about giallos, but we haven't really gone outside of that until this year. We did Torso, mm-hmm. the Torso. Sergio Martino movie. But now we're going way back mm-hmm. to the going 60s. Way back. In, yeah. in, as far as giallo goes... Um, how how deep are we into it at this point in 1964? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Oh, that, Sean. here we go, <laughs> Professor Collins. I like straightening well, his bow tie I like, right now. I like to know where we are. Yeah. What yeah. is what is the consciousness? Are we have we are we deep into it? Are we just starting out? Where are we at? We are just starting out. Okay. So you can tell the so you know obviously the word giallo comes from the uh, giallo uh, Mondadori uh, books that were yes. they were they were publishing Edgar Wallace Agatha Christie mysteries right mm-hmm. but cinematically right the giallo movie actually kind of comes from uh like the Germans did oh. adaptations of Edgar Wallace Edgar Wallace he's a he's a guy who wrote like a bunch of crime novels mm-hmm. right but he also was the co-creator of King Kong Oh, oh he co-wrote cool. King Kong. Uh, so I mean, the guy wrote like I mean, hundreds and hundreds of books and stuff like that, and and I think Mighty Joe Young might have also had a hand in. But interesting. Um, that's an interesting shared history. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, right. Edgar Wallace, the guy Edgar who created Wallace, King Kong, the guy right? who created a, a Charlize <laughs> Theron movie. Yeah. Um, so the Germans had these crime movies that were mystery whodunit kind of things, and they are kind of collectively known now as creamy. K R M. Don't like that. K-R-I-M-I. No, I don't like We've discussed that before, but yeah. We, Crimey? Yeah. None of it sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not either. German, so Have I Have you seen the creamy movies? <laughs> yeah. Ew. And oh, so the German creamy movies. Stop it. <laughs> so the first... Like now recognized as the first Giallo movie was a movie called The Girl Who Knew Too Much mm. from 1963. Okay. It's black and white and directed by Mario Bava. Black and white? 
Yeah, it has John Saxon in it. Okay. Wow. And, uh, wow. Yeah. A young John Saxon. A young John I Saxon. Yeah. Black and white from 1960. Wow. Yeah, the year Why before. The year white? before this. Do we, uh, were we not there yet? Were we? It was a, 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 a I think it was a budgetary thing. Okay. Well, I, I was going to say, was it because like, it's cheaper? Yeah, I yeah. think I don't think movies back then were shot on black and white because it was like, ooh, it's an aesthetic choice. I right. think back then it was like, well, you can either you have a bigger budget to do stuff, mm-hmm. or you're going to be in color. Sure, mm-hmm. it, it it's funny because it felt um, I got a lot of noir feelings from this movie, mm-hmm. which goes with the black and white of it all. This, yeah, if but this was in black and white, I mean, I love the color, but. It felt like it could have been black and white and fit right into that genre. Very well, that's well. they never they never give credit to like film noir, like '30s right, American right. film noir, to because I guess you know I always see this kind of you're on like this path that eventually leads to like the slasher movie, mm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, so Jallo is on your way to it's probably the the genre that inspired the the slasher film. Mm-hmm. That are like it's like the Jallo plus Alfred Hitchcock, yeah. Mm. You end up with like Dario Argento, mm-hmm. and then you end up with uh, the slasher films. It, in my mind, this movie has always been to Giallo what like Halloween is to slashers, right? Like yeah, it's, this one, it's the yeah. first one to make it really catch fire. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's because I think visually, right? Like he defined a lot of the 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 look of what a Giallo movie, you know the. And I, I guess uh, because Black Sabbath was the other movie that um, um, Bava directed, he like in, that was Sabbath. the year before. Yeah. That was Black the same Sabbath year. Is, that's good. That's great. That's great. I think one of the best cold opens in horror history is Black, what Black was Sabbath. The, the uh, Iron Maiden mask. Oh, that's Black oh, yeah. Sunday. Oh, Black Sunday. Yeah. Oh, Black Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Black Sunday. I'm sorry. Yeah. But Black Sabbath is also awesome. Mm-hmm. But Black Sabbath, if you remember, mm-hmm. has that segment. There's the telephone. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's basically right. like a little mini right. giallo. Right. So he yeah. went the girl with the uh, uh-huh. who knew too much, which is a take on Hitchcock's the man who knew too much. Right. So you have the girl who knew too much, the telephone segment of Black Sabbath, mm-hmm. and then you have blood on uh, and black lace, mm-hmm. blood and black lace. <laughs> so yeah, I mean you're kind of he's making the visual style of what this genre is eventually yeah. going to be, and. um and then, but the it didn't actually catch fire as an Italian genre until like the seventies, and that was when Dario Argento made uh, the Bird with the Crystal Plumage, and then everybody <laughs> just wanted to copy Check your it. bingo box. That movie got <laughs> yeah. named again. <laughs> yeah, because that's the one that really like set yeah. fire to it. But th- it's like if you go back to nineteen sixty four, it's like okay, like basically all the elements are kind of here. We have the black right. blood killer. We have the beautiful women being you know killed by the. We have the who who did it? You know, right. yes. um, so if you're, straight if you're razors making, and if you're making the analog to slasher, if it let's say blood and black lace is the Halloween to to like like what Halloween is to slashers, blood and black lace is to giallo. Then would that make the bird with the crystal plumage like Friday the Thirteenth, like the one that really got it into the mainstream? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, because it was so popular yeah. that everybody wanted to copy it. Right. So, and then yeah. we got those, and then it, the, those it just becomes years. a factory. Of right. Movies. Then we got those yeah. years where they're just like, yeah. here's more, here's more. Gotcha. But that, I guess, is the thing that you know. It's like I wanted to talk about Mario or bring a Mario Bava movie because um, I don't know that we've really given this guy the credit that the world does not give this guy. The credit. Yeah. 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 For Probably the not, influence no. that he has had, I mean, you know, he made a movie called The Planet of the Vampires, mm-hmm. which Ooh. has the plot of Alien, mm-hmm. right? Okay. It's like yeah, just somehow also related mm, yeah. to um, what you call it, Life Force. Like, is there a connection there too? Because there, that always that space a vampires. Yeah, movie. yeah. I mean, it's not the same, but I mean, like sure. in that one, uh, there's a distress signal. They land on a planet. They find a fossilized. You know, mm-hmm. like that one's been on my list for a while. Yeah, they yeah. found um, a fossilized vampire. They find something, they? and oh, then it kind uh-huh. of de- detours. But you know, they always all, find all of his movies have great titles. My God, just scrolling his IMDb right now. Five dollars for an August moon. That's a jello. <laughs> that sounds fucking awesome. And Beach know? Fennec is in that one. Hatchet for the honeymoon. Yeah, that's a jello. Does, I mean, <laughs> does he name all these? I'm curious. No. Or who no. is it? Kill Are baby kill. That Are there different awesome? writers for yeah. each one of these? Kill baby kill. I yeah. think was the one that Martin Scorsese said was Bava's masterpiece. And then Scorsese used the image of the little girl 
ghost from yes. that movie as in the uh, last temptation of christ mm-hmm. uh tim Knives burton the avenger that sounds cool that one's got cameron mitchell in it yeah, yeah. it's a uh, uh-huh. i'm gonna have to just deep dive some baba stuff i didn't realize oh, yeah. there was all this other i got i got a box set yeah. but kayla i can yeah, right. loan you it's got uh, the some, baba of, box. Yeah. <laughs> some of the good ones uh, yeah there were two uh that were released way back um he made a movie called a bay of blood Yep. Yeah. which was released here as Twitch of the Death Nerve. And oh, there yeah. is a killing that. in that movie that is directly copied in Friday the 13th Part 2. If we're uh, making that kind of really? stupid little being wow. speared to a, a bed. I think we're making that, that connection because wow. there is some... Uh, uh, I mean, it's the same shot. Wow. It, you, if Is I it, showed yeah. you the yeah. two shots from those movies, you, w- you would not know which yeah. one there, came there's from. There's a musical connection as well. I felt yeah. like a lot of that mystery... I feel like Sound. I see the DNA for like a handful of movies across the genres in this movie. Oh, sure. Uh, like the look of the killer, like the like Rorschach and Watchmen just totally knocked this off, right? Yeah, yeah it's, like, a, it's, it's the d- same It's a little dark man as well. Yeah. Or well, it looked like... um. Uh, Dick Tracy too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even yeah. like the the cloth mask, it is yeah. Rorschach without the ink blots. It is right, exactly but that is also that. like trench coats and hats and dark shadows mm-hmm. and alleys and yeah. noir films yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you you do see that you see the look of the fedora and yeah. the the black trench coat mm-hmm. in other Jalo movies, but this one. He has no face. The cloth the guy, mask, yeah. yeah. He literally has no, he's a yeah. faceless killer. Right. This know? I like. Yeah, this yeah. is my favorite like Giallo killer look. I love it. And it was pretty good it's because I guess that's the thing, like a lot of Jalo movies, you know, you're trying to keep the killer's identity a secret. Mm-hmm. So. And they won't even show them. No. Yeah. No, it's you just see the hand. hand. You yeah, see the hand. Know. So this yeah. is yeah. nice where you get, I think you get a, um, the scenes feel more complete because you get you get to see these characters interacting with each other, not just from a POV perspective. Yeah, you get to see the mm-hmm. entire character doing whatever he's. There's doing. lots of good lurk. Like like I could definitely see Darkman takes a lot from this too, because mm-hmm. a lot of the lurking and the creeping in the shadows and the silhouettes of the killer is yeah. it was very dark. And works it yeah. makes it more creepy when you mm-hmm. can you know you can see that you can see them without seeing them. Yeah, which is nice. Actually, I'm trying to think of there's another there's another Jello movie. I mean, I was stage yeah, I was just saying, someone they wear a mask. Yeah. They wear a mask. Yeah. I know okay. it's no, yeah. uh, I know it's no black on mind. red scarf or red on black scarf. <laughs> yeah. But. Oh, yeah, because that's a, such a big difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, usually it does seem like yes. it's like you see the black gloves yes. doing the thing, but oh, you yeah. never actually see the killer. That's a surprise reveal. Right. No, there's always creeping around corners, hands yeah. grabbing people and everything. This is a full on the killer I'm, we see doing things. I'm trying to think back to the American Giallo. I know who killed me and if he had a mask. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had the gloved hand and the blue, blue that? blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think he had a. I don't think he. Got I don't to think see he had a mask. Yeah. I could think you just saw him through like the plastic sheets or whatever in that movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. Alice, sweet Alice, the other yes. American child yeah. did have yeah. a dress to that kill. That was a creepy was mask. Pretty That's pretty a, always yeah. a creepy mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. What was I going to tell you about uh, about Bava? But I mean, like you know, one of the other things, like Tim Burton, uh, Sleepy Hollow, mm-hmm. looks like Black Sabbath, but yeah. a, or Black. The the Vertilac section <laughs> of yeah, oh, yeah the Vertilac yeah uh, we were saying uh, was it last year uh, one night in our last, last night, night in Soho, Soho yeah. came out two years ago I think. two years ago yeah. it's like there's a stylistic influence I think between this movie and that one direct connection yeah mm-hmm. so it still kind of keeps going on I yes. think that, it's uh, funny this you mentioned guy, Burton because I was thinking of Burton during stuff like this like some of his stuff like it feels directly related to this mm-hmm. with that um, um, I'm thinking of Batman Returns for some reason, mm-hmm. but just that whole look there, the uh, always the neon sign that's blinking and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which seems to be like, I don't know if that's a Bava thing or if he started it with these movies. Cause yeah. now we've seen two of them where yeah. he has that kind of pulsing yeah. out the window, you know, the light, mm-hmm. there's some kind of neon light going off. That, this, we need it, to incorporate this more into modern movies. I think. More people Have need you to seen Last Night in Soho? I haven't. Yeah, there's one uh, outside her that's window. That's literally what happens in Last Night in Soho. <laughs> oh, I believe it's it. It's literally it. They literally show a neon light flashing the three colors but, and then right. pan into her room where you see it. Right. Right. But mm-hmm. we did get it in yeah. things like uh, Malignant and had a big... Yeah, because you know, yeah. the yeah. these, thing. obviously, you know, James right. Wan, again, is influenced yeah. by these movies. And a lot of times I think... We always give credit to Dario Argento and, as and them in the Suspiria, high contrast because which is yeah, wrong. I'm sorry. Like what year was Suspiria? <laughs> I just wanted. seventy. It's way later. Seven. Yeah. Oh way yeah, later. Well, there's a whole thing. I, yeah, yeah. I think when 
I think people that have like a surface level knowledge of Giallo and horror, they always accredit it to, to Argento and they always say Suspiria. And mm-hmm. I like there's a lot of debate of whether or not Suspiria is even a Giallo movie, right. you know, right? Mm-hmm. But and everyone thinks that goes to that movie with the neon colors. I'm like, no, it's this movie. Like, you, you, this movie. You, you learn what it's funny. You learn what maybe is sort of the top superficial yes. thing that people know. Yes. And what is deeper. I I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I learned this watching. Um, I get that feeling watching the new screen movies. It yeah. feels like they, they name check very superficial uh, surface level movies that do contribute to this stuff, but not the deeper stuff like mentioning Bob on so well, they would a, name Argento not Bob but that's a great mm-hmm. example because that movie name checks Giallo but doesn't make any Giallo references <laughs> they, right. they don't even bother to yeah. name they check a Giallo should've. movie they, they say have. the only mention is well she gave me a C on my Giallo paper and that's yeah. it it's like well name a fucking movie if you name actually know movie? about it give me a scene give me a yeah. Giallo yeah. scene yeah. in your screen it's, movie they yeah. don't even have a poster in the room nothing and I, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's a great example Sean because that is the most surface level it, it no- really it, knowledge, recently you know? that's what it feels like yeah. Yeah. we have a surface yeah. level knowledge of it we can't I mean I suppose they can't go any deeper for a, not alienating but because uh, a lot of people haven't know, seen them, right, I guess that's the thing. Know what and they Suspiria are. Yes. is, I guess, like maybe something that you know people may have seen. Right, you're dipping yeah. your toe mm-hmm. into something an Italian. You may that's know maybe of. like the most famous Italian horror movie. Probably, going on probably. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. Because like even my parents know about that. You know, yeah. That's and he, they've heard of. Argento only really used that kind of high contrast lighting twice, and that was Suspiria and its sequel uh, Inferno. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But Bava, if, I mean, if you go back and look at like his filmography mm-hmm. for years, he was doing. You know, like they all of his movies pretty much have that high contrast lighting, and it and starts now, from the credits in this movie. Yeah, yeah, but now, like, I just saw John Wick four, right? Mm-hmm. And it is very uh, candy colored, yeah, high gels on everything. You know, malignant. You know, mm-hmm. it's like now it seems like we're doing all that kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're making movies in color, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> yeah. which I think is like what was going on back then. It's mm-hmm. like we're making movies in color. We're gonna make them Put colorful, some color, mm-hmm. yeah, but. The difference to me watching this, it's like newer movies motivate their why there's a green light over there. Right. This one yeah. doesn't because this we have just like purple lighting. There's purple shadows coming out and everything. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't technically matter to the movie. It's there is like uh, uh, just uh, nice, colorful details within mm-hmm. the scene. Mm-hmm. They're not focusing on it, but it is there. And it's nice to see because I saw a lot of purple in this movie just uh, when they're outside showing like shots of the whole building. Certain windows are purple and everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's but not- it's not like I mean, I, I guess if we're painting the picture, it's not like the whole screen is awash in purple. No, no, no There's no, like just, purple highlights. It, and then there'd very, be like a very red yes. uh, point of mm-hmm. interest. And then there's like a green. Yes. I love know. I love their blocking of colors in this because mm-hmm. they're yeah. very specific. In, in where they're going to put it. Like, this is going to be purple, but these windows are going to be red. But then we have darkness down here. It, it, it does. It feels very purposeful. And, uh, you know, it's not the focus of it. It adds flourish yeah. to these things. Mm-hmm. The set design in this movie is absolutely outstanding. Like, mm-hmm. all the like the little highlights, like the bright red phone and, like, the bright yes. red diary. Like, the accent colors mm-hmm. and the way for no, using, Yeah, right. Yeah. And I like it because it's for no reason. It's just, like, we're It's just we're really dramatic. Have. Yeah. Everything yeah. is very dramatic. It adds dramatic. to it without being, like, the complete mm-hmm. focus. Of yeah. It. Well... And it's interesting he said without reason because, and I didn't get this, right? There's a guy named Tim Lucas who was the, uh, or I think he maybe still is the editor of Video Watchdog Magazine, which is basically a zine, but that has gone on to be like a big thing in in cult uh, film appreciation. And he wrote the book on uh, Mario Bava and devoted like a lot of his life to studying this guy's stuff and tracking down like, I mean, the most obscure details (laughs) about all of this stuff. He probably knows Ernesto Castaldi. He probably does. Yeah. He had to interview him <laughs> at some point. Don't kill me. Yeah. Um, who wrote Torso. Mm-hmm. Who wrote Torso. Um, mm-hmm. But he pointed out, and so this time I was actually watching it, it's like, you know, we, you know, because you're like, well, I mean, what motivates this light to be a certain color? And I can't really tell what that is, but he is doing something with color because all the characters who wear black are either associated, they're associated with death in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, the phones are all red, yep. mm-hmm. but the killer, who we find out later, or, I, or no, the victim, one of the victims, she picks it up and it's got a black handle. Mm-hmm. The killer wears black, like the whole way through the damn movie. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, that's, you know, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, 
And so the victims will wear these different colors, but then uh, the, when there's like a black in there somewhere, and then they're going to get killed. The mannequins, too, in this movie. The red velvet mannequins were a nice touch. With a black wig. Like, yeah. those are really cool, but also like not practical at all for use like that's a decorative yeah. mannequin right like yeah. you can't right. design dresses on but a, a great mannequin. choice like, especially yeah. when, i mean with the rest of the movie you get a lot of um uh not the mannequins but the uh what are they called dress forms dress forms yes mm-hmm. the dress forms that are different colors throughout the movie yeah. with just a fucking purple light or mm-hmm. a red light shot on them yeah yeah it's great it's good well i guess because it's called blood on black light well the original italian title which i'm not going to try and pronounce but it translates literally to six women for the murderer uh, <laughs> I would like you to try and pronounce yeah. the. It it takes so I I think blood and black lace the American title is inspired because it, it takes place in a fashion house. Yes, yes. right. So this is it's hot, a better title. Uh, yeah. yeah, blood, <laughs> well, yeah, hot couture, title. right? Mm. Um, yes. Mm. Which is, I believe, high fashion. Yes, in it is. French. Mm-hmm. So yes. uh, that's the name of the I fashion did not, house. I did not know that. I've yeah. seen it yeah. many times. High fashion. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it and literally, so, it literally translates to high dressmaking. Yeah. High dressmaking. Uh, yeah, but it go. means, but it means high fashion. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I suppose you have a cast of characters, and you have some of them are victims, and others are going to be the killer. We have to try and figure out who's who uh, by the end of the movie. So. I was going to say who's in this movie, but there's only really Cam- one Cameron person Mitchell, that you. That's all I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Cameron Mitchell, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome to the Saturday Night Pre Show. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I, I think we have to be there if yeah. we aren't already. I want to say that we've had him already. He, I we thought have, we did because he was in Night Train to Terror. Yep. Mm-hmm. He was in From a Whisper to a Scream, yep. aka yep. The Offspring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was in Action USA, mm-hmm. right? So that's his kind right. of his Wait, later Wait, we stuff. didn't actually do Action USA, We though. did. We did. I thought... It got canceled, but we came back and we did it again. Was yeah. I not here for it? I think you were I here. think we're all here for it. I don't remember it. <laughs> I have no memory of Action USA. <laughs> well, he it wasn't was, oh, you remember a lot. people driving through uh, people's houses and be like, sorry about driving through your house, and then the thing explodes. And, <laughs> no, I have no uh, memory uh, of this. A car jumping over a bus, and there's another explosion. Oh, wow. No matter. I'm Gregory Scott Cummins, I don't yep, remember who was <laughs> in. Uh, he's in Stone Cold. He was he's a helicopter in, pilot. He was Stone in a Cold bunch of things. Yeah, he's uh, he's Max Dad, who we've discussed. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this. It wasn't that long ago. No, that we wasn't. Did it wasn't. No, this is all. But Cameron this Mitchell. Is all it all has left my brain immediately. <laughs> that's, apparently, that's, all that's usually me. So yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just wanted to say, like, you know, we we talk about like we we keep seeing this guy in genre movies, mm-hmm. and so the impression is always like, okay, he's a uh, used up actor right who's now doing you know action usa used up from or something was her well that's why so i was like november i was like we just did that right this was (laughs) really recent deleted those files pretty quickly so i don't remember the the cowboy (laughs) hitman who was following them around texas panama like his black partner named panama (laughs) Panama. only known as panama that makes it more confusing to me because now i'm thinking of harley davidson in the marlboro so now i'm getting all my wires crossed so were you but were you here for that I I'm starting to think I was, but I don't know. I don't know that you. I were, don't I know. You were, I, don't I was know. here. To be fair, I don't remember it either. All right, yeah. Yeah. things think explode a lot wow, in that yeah. movie. All right, um, a lot of explosions. All right, so Cameron Mitchell, I found out he started off on Broadway, and then oh. he originated Hoppy Loman, not Willie Hoppy oh, in okay. Death of a Death Salesman. Of salesman. <laughs> Uh, he was in a movie called How to Marry a Millionaire, and then he also starred alongside uh, John Wayne, Marilyn Monroe, Lauren Bacall, Gary Cooper, Marlon Brando, and others. Wow. In? Oh, just in just a, throughout, like, his career. Yeah, throughout, throughout his career? How to Marry a Millionaire. That was Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. 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 Yes. And yes, was. was Lauren Bacall also in there? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, apparently, he is best remembered as Buck Cannon in the TV show The High Chaparral. High you know? Chaparral. Oh, my yeah. God. I see commercials I for that all the time. There. Yeah, so he's We used the, to run that on my network the all the time. good guys at Sunrise. <laughs> yep. Named after a fucking bush in the West, but whatever. The High <laughs> Chaparral. What, Really? That, uh, the, yeah, that's the chaper- what that is. The chaparral is oh. what grew around the uh, the the area that they. Well, like, that's a we shall name it the high name. chaparral. What the fuck? I think, no, <laughs> now you know. I watched the show. <laughs> I was forced to watch this show. Huh? So is he the lead guy? Buck Cannon, Cameron Mitchell. <laughs> I, I honestly know. don't remember. Okay. All right, high let's, pull out, well, let's put it this way. I learned all about Cameron Mitchell after I watched the show oh, okay. on here, <laughs> yeah. so I don't remember. His presence in that show. Okay. But I remember the High Chaparral. Mm-hmm. Cameron Mitchell has also starred in a porno movie. 
What? Oh. Well, okay. So he was, he was a detective, a police detective in a porno that was called Dixie Ray Hollywood Star. No, after, yeah, long, you know, around <laughs> the time you're doing from a whisper to a, a scream. Was and, he a performer? I think he, just, just he played a police a, detective. Okay, it was like kind of, you know, one of those, it was 1983, so it was probably one of those porno movies that had a plot. <laughs> Actually yeah. had a plot, yeah. 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 See, you say he's washed up. I'm hearing he's done it all. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. done it all. Like, done it? Yeah, everything. <laughs> he is a jack of all trades. Yeah. He keeps showing up here. And it's a just like, oh, renaissance man, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there was like, so there's one other person in the cast, uh, a, a voice actor, because this movie's dubbed, right, in English. Of course. But, I mean, did mm-hmm. you recognize any of the voices? No. I mean, I mean, I barely recognize anything we watch yeah. on this show. So you could say. <laughs> don't ask somebody. me. I don't yeah. remember a movie. We I don't remember like shit. So Nobody no. stood out, <laughs> yeah. but. So multiple characters this time when i was watching i'm like oh that's him talking to himself you know like he just <laughs> changed his voice so it's paul freeze and paul freeze was the guy i guess you could say he was uh boris of boris and natasha on rock yeah and oh okay but okay. he did like so did he, like, did he do rankin and bass yes he was in okay. the hobbit yeah. he was in uh lord of the rings he was in the last yes. unicorn he did stuff for disney yeah. he's the voice of the haunted mansion right yes okay Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I mean, his like laundry list of credits that this sure. guy actually did as a narrator or yeah. whatever. But he was also an actor and yeah, you know, did the voiceover dubbing for several. Uh, he's Cameron Mitchell's character. He did his voice okay. and I think so he did the he police is just talking to himself. And he did the, the <laughs> cocaine addict. Why? Why is it like is it availability of actors later on that no one can be around to to dub their own shit? They decide to do it differently. Is it cheaper? Like why why is You so got much the man of a thousand voices. Oh, that's Mel Blank. But I mean well, like yeah. you got Paul Freeze. He can camouflage his voice and So they're just like, Well, you're here, voice all these other characters as well. Yeah. Okay. They just paid for the studio for the one day. I guess so. <laughs> it's like you have five people to dub go. And maybe that's it. You pay for one guy instead of, you know, five. I think. Maybe. Well, I mean, it's, it, it feels be, like it. Yeah. You're not getting paid for every character. These are people who don't yeah. think yeah. it's pertinent to record sound. <laughs> right. So I uh, I believe they're just like, yeah, you can do it all. Yeah. Go for it. Um, okay. So the plot of this movie, uh, what kicks it off? What's our inciting incident? Murder? I don't know. what I forgot. Um... I was like, there's mannequins oh, standing in the yeah. garden at the beginning. Yeah. No, we we open on a fashion salon, Christian's hot couture, mm-hmm. and we see one of the models leaving the salon right. for the night, and she... Um, Rushes to a tree to talk to her. Yeah, she's... Oh, yeah. She's rushing out to... Is she ta- going to talk to somebody? She's going to talk to the antique guy, because he's an addict. Yep, he's a cocaine he's addict. He's a cocaine addict. Yeah. And then she gets killed on the way. Yeah, by the black gloved right. mask, right. faceless man. Strangled. We, yeah, we also see the other there, guy run out. Strangled? Yeah, yeah, and then she There's gets a lot stu- of strangled. Then she gets stuffed in an armoire. Yep. yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Where she's discovered by the woman who run she runs or owns the place. Yeah, she seems right. like she seems it. like the madam of the fashion house. She is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Cameron Mitchell's character, I think, owns it then, and she is that what he is? Run? He's the I'm owner of it sure. because I'm not, they don't really give much to Cameron Mitchell. Right. As far as backstory in this movie, yeah. he's there, but I don't know yeah. what he does. Signs the checks, maybe she runs it. Uh, you're okay. I'm wondering, yes. Yeah, I'm wondering if, um, like she, she, it's like the house of Christian. She owns it, but he's the designer. He's Christian. Does well, that make sense? Because I thought that I was like, is he the designer? But they have a guy who is the dress designer as part yeah, of that's the always how it works oh, there's, okay. there's like the face of like christian dior mm-hmm. is an actual brand right yeah yeah uh, well christian dior is long since but gone many yeah. designers so for people, christian dior, right yeah. so people design under the name christian dior okay right. yeah. so it's kind of like that i didn't get any i didn't get any vibes from him that he was within the fashion industry he doesn't seem like he's involved no with it. he I doesn't mean, give that vibe no well, i don't know he does wear an ascot yeah he, <laughs> so, but is it red on black, he, or he's, black got or like, red? he's got like a that's, vest that's and a, a three point. piece he is yeah. fashionable but he's i just very didn't get fashionable. i just didn't get it didn't seem like he was making fashion decisions in this movie i don't know if that makes mm. i don't know if that matters at no, all he's just, just reading the paper right. yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. looking at a fashion magazine or something like that oh he does well he must be an authority because he says like uh Fine her, don't fire her, or something at the right. beginning, right? So he yeah. has. Uh, you know. That's why I think he he's runs like... the women. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, there is some like weird language around like the women that participate in this. Like, doesn't she say at one point, like, I'm not running a boarding school, they're free to go whenever they want? And it's yeah. like, but the way you say that makes it sound like they're not. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like, 
what you're saying sounds right, but the way <laughs> you're saying it doesn't sound right. Like, yeah. They're free to leave. Yeah. Whatever they please. Yeah. I mean, I get what she's saying. She's like, they're models. I'm not their mom. But yeah. at right, the same yeah. time. Yeah. But it gives off that vibe. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess it seems like, okay, they're going to all stay at the same place or something, but that's not actually what's happening. Yeah. They do live off campus. Yeah, this is yeah. not Suspiria. Um, no. So... All right the the plot. I don't seems know anyone's to, name though. That's the thing about this. Uh, yeah, it's really. A, we know there was Isabel. a Nicole. No. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It's really they, hardly say their names. It like, feels we we're like. just talking like the madam lady. I don't know yeah. what her name is. No, uh, Chris. Chris. Her name's her, Chris. Christina. Chris. Yeah, she is Christina. Christina. Yeah, he's Christina. Chris. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. She is Chris. Franz, I believe, is the token. Franz. The Franz. Huh? The, the Franz is here. Franz. Franz. Franco. Franco. He's Franco. Frank. He's Franco. The yep. antique guy, Frank. Yes. He runs yeah. the antique store. Okay. Yeah. So how do all these people, so like, Marco maybe? what's the thing that, so there's a murder. This one model is murdered, like, yeah. right off yeah. the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then you're like, okay, who killed her and why right. is going to be the question. Mm-hmm. Then there's a diary. A diary is found. I love the drama over the diary. There's a lot of drama <laughs> the over best. the diary. Yeah. This red, as, red, red, red as diary. Soon as, yeah. she, as soon as she announces that she found her diary, everyone, like, there are like, dramatic close-ups. Dramatic, like, turn to look at the camera like an intro soap to, opera. A soap opera or something. What are the secrets that could be in there? It's, like, in that instant, I was like, all right, this is Clue. Okay, but like, yeah. we're here. If I found a murdered girl's diary, I would I would be pretty stoked. <laughs> like, I, mean, I'd I would like, read oh my the God, shit out of it. I found all the answers. But like, that's yeah. what everybody's looking. They're yeah. like, oh, are there secrets about me in there? Yeah. Okay, but that's the thing. Like, you don't announce it to the room. No, you, you don't. You secretly read it to yourself that and then give it to the police. Right. Go that to the bathroom. Yes. You read it real quick in the bathroom and then, you and then go give to the it to the police. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't yep. announce it to the room. No. And then start reading it yeah. out loud. Yeah. That, I mean, that's what you do if you find a diary in high school, not a diary in a murder situation, you know? Like... Well, because I then kind of, well, I mean, I kind of like it, like, you know, it, I mean, I guess the movie's going to do it anyway, right? Yeah. You figure, well, there's a bunch of suspects, but now it kind of gives them like, okay, they're all focused on this diary. So Isabel had dirt on everybody. Yeah. Which kind of one like. actually killed her for it, mm-hmm. I guess right. is the question. So then you're going to have murder set pieces because that's yes. what these movies are. Or no, or I guess this is what it kind of is starting to establish, right? Mm-hmm. This is like the building blocks of the later slasher movies. I like the set piece though of everyone walking by trying to snatch the diary, but they don't get they all, all miss their chance, or you know, someone's watching them. Right, it is a long it. set piece of like we're watching this purse and people keep kind of like slithering by mm-hmm. trying to like get a glance or snatch yes. it and it's like it, we know it's there. Yeah. It's a nice handbag. It is. <laughs> it's 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 set up in a nice shot where we get one mm-hmm. of the characters who comes and stands right in the arches of the, yes. the handles of it. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's and nice. the I love the fake out of like the rack of clothes going in front of it. Like, yeah. oh, is it still going to be there when yeah. it goes by? Yeah, and Always. nope, it's gone. Yeah, and it does it. like a couple. Of, there's like this big tracking shot as he goes past all the like individual cubicles where yes. the models mm-hmm. are changing. I love, that but you track. can see in one of them like the, the bag the is end, sitting. Yeah. On the table in the mm-hmm. in the background, they're like, are we going to come back there? And it's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one of the models steals it. So then you're like, okay, she gets killed. But who knew? Because then uh, the girl who found the diary ends up getting murdered. How did she get killed? Pe- is that Peggy? Uh, it could have been there Peggy. Was a Peggy. Yep, there was a Peggy. Oh, she goes over to. So she <sighs> she tells. Uh, Franz, the drug addict, that like we oh. found Isabel's diary, and apparently Franz and Isabel had a thing going on. So yeah. I I got the diary, and I'm going to bring it to you, right? But then somebody steals it from her. But she is the first. She goes over to Franz's place, and she's attacked by the killer, who kills her uh, through this like uh, there's like a suit of armor. <laughs> yeah, yes. in his antique store, he like Knocks pushes it, it on her. Yeah, but there's like a chase and through this whole a, antique store with a, the neon lights. There's a death glove with three prongs on it that he smacks her in the face with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, smacks her in the face with. Well, I mean, he, uh, it's it's a uh, it's an old part of the armor that's got three spikes. Coming out of the, the palm. Does yeah. it go in her eyes with it? Is that I, I feel like it's eye, uh, both later, eyes and then... In the mouth. Yeah. But later on, we see her laying on the floor, and it's not her Yeah, eyes. they cheated. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's what I thought. Because yeah. it, like... I mean, it's 1964, and I know that we've got, you know, Herschel Gordon Lewis is sure. either right there or right around the corner, and we got uh, Hammer doing gory stuff in, yeah. in Curse of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. But... 
I was like, Jesus Christ. I mean, well, uh, Black Sunday had mm-hmm. that scene with the witch's mask yeah. and he hammers onto her yeah, face with brutal. The spikes. It this brutal. seemed like, I'm like, oh, I see what your thing is there, yeah. Mario. You're doing that again. Yes. You're bringing those spikes right into the camera. And I know of where like they're going. It's like a slow pan, like a slow movement of lifting it over mm-hmm. her face before he attacks her with it. Like, yeah. Right into her face. Yeah. And you're like, oh, God, that's got to hurt. But yeah, you're right, mm-hmm. Holly. Later on, we're mm-hmm. showing her corpse and she does not have missing eyeballs i do she love doesn't. this chase through the antique store though with like the neon lights flashing and there's dust and mm-hmm. like every yeah. object gets in her way that possibly could and then like the way he drops down those stairs and creeps around like all this stuff was mm-hmm. really cool the, i really like the way that they let the killer move in this movie mm-hmm. you know, right. very unnatural but it's fun mm-hmm. again, well again it's a, a different because they can be in front of the camera and actually mm-hmm. doing right. things in this one and they probably can't see for shit with that bag on their head either probably not well, it's some kind it's of. Probably why he just falls all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but if you're kinda, wearing a mask. I saw that as like, okay, that's like a precursor of your Jason. He's a faceless, you know. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. Michael Myers stands around. He's more ghost like. Mm-hmm. This guy yeah. is more like, okay, if you're going to have a killer in your movie with no face, he's going to be running around. Yeah, he's and, pursuing you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I keep thinking of Scream, but that's just me. And then, well, I mean, eventually it gets there. Right? Eventually I mean, we get know? there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the second girl. Uh, who, the one who actually stole the diary because she, uh, if I remember correctly, is this the one who burns it? She burns it. She's Peggy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The one who gets her face, face melted. Burn. Yes. Yeah. She's yeah. Peggy. Is it Ashley before? I don't know who. Nicole? Uh, uh, Nicole. Nicole. There is a Nicole. <laughs> there is a Nicole. Ashley's not in. Nicole is in. There is a Nicole. There is a Nicole. Yeah. yeah. Ashley. But you're right. Uh, <laughs> I know. Peggy uh-huh. gets her face <laughs> Burned on a yeah. hot bell. I don't know what, what is this? What is that? It's a stove. It's oh, like a, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's a little like wood burning stove. It's just like the side of it, sure. Like oh, the curved okay, side okay. of it. But it, like the the makeup on her hand when the hand pulls away when yeah. he burns her hand. Ooh, yeah, it's it's, like it's gross. It's, yeah, it's it like is yellowy, like pussy. Gooey. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good burns. Gross. It's just like Ugh. yeah, it's Ugh. really gross. Yeah. Am I missing a murder here? Because I'm trying to think of who yes. did this, right? Because it wasn't that the uh, the alibi murder because the killer abducts Peggy I, and takes I, her back I to the grotto. Dare you in your probably many viewings of this movie to make this clear to me. Okay. <laughs> because this is a lot of... It seems like there's maybe a, not convoluted, but there's there's just a lot going on here about I did this for them and I did this. The there. one girl with the pillow suffocated with the pillow. Who is that and why? She was the last one you. to yeah. go. Well, I looked it up, so I know who it is. Uh, well, yeah, like, I don't, I don't I, know I this character's I name. Could, no. I could not from the I, right, you could say, that, yes, she died. She got suffocated with the pillow. I don't know why. She I don't got, know the connection. Okay, I got that one. OK, she's the last one to go. <laughs> she is the we have to blame the crimes on someone sure so we're going to kill her and then there was like a whole well i guess we're, we're gonna to have to explain what's actually happening in this movie <laughs> so the shock reveal right is that there are two killers yes. of course in this movie um you okay with that, Michaela? I, I was gonna say I'm actually weirdly really not bothered by <laughs> they it. are not the when same it's, when it's monster. people it's right. different okay, okay. than okay. when it's Two, two of the okay. same yeah. creature. Yeah. You don't like yeah. two monsters. Yeah, no, no two yeah. monsters. Okay. Two people's okay. Got it. Yeah. They have so, different. They have at least maybe different motivations. Yeah, they are yeah. Unique people and, rather than and two, they're usually two working alligators. together. You yes. know, mm-hmm. whereas like the animals are not usually working together. Hey, since you. All right. Yeah. So what's well, what's the motive of the killers? Who are the killers and what's their motive? That's the, a fantastic the, question. The madam Paula. is one of the killers. Yes. And the, that guy, I can't remember Cameron his Mitchell name. is the other one, yep. yes. Who uh, owns the... So they're working... They were working together off the yes. bat as being... Yes. Um, she runs it, and maybe he owns it, or is the head designer of it. I'm still yeah. not sure. Mm-hmm. So, the, so the motive, right, was that together, the pair of them, I think, killed the madam's husband. And so now New Dude is right. He's like... Yeah, I think he was her. He, she was having an affair with him or something, and so they killed her husband. But Isabel somehow found out about this and has been blackmailing them, mm. and so they kill her. So they kill her at the very beginning of the movie, yep. right? But then it turns out she was keeping a diary. So then they're All like, the "Oh amazing. shit!" Now and we other have, people saw the diary. We have to kill the girl. So they go yeah. after the girl they who they think stole the diary. Yes. Yep. and then it's like she doesn't have it. 
Then we got to go to the next girl. Yes, we got to keep <laughs> killing people till we find the diary. We get the diary. Yep. But then uh, she burned the she diary. Burns yes. It. Which, so, like, shouldn't you just, okay, problem solved, right? Yeah. Your diary's burned. Why right, you got to yeah. keep going? If, if after there this goes point, all your information, then y- the person and the diary are gone. So, <laughs> right. Do we need done. to do more? Well, I think it, it's because the police, because this is like the whole second like thing that's going on here, right? There's a police detective. <laughs> Uh yeah, uh-huh. and he's going around interrogating everybody, and he's angling towards okay. It's got to be one of the men, right? He just pulls right, them all the, in, yeah. Mm-hmm. All Which five is, them, I mean, yeah. that's the idea. Like that's what you should do. It's yeah, like, these are my five suspects. I'm going to hold them all. And right. We'll see what happens for at least a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This yeah. guy didn't end up having, uh, as far as I can remember, as much. To do with the ending of this movie, the I mean, police detective. Yeah, is yeah. this a problem? Yeah, I think so. A little bit because yeah. we get a resolution at the end of this without them being involved. Right, the cops never at actually all. like. Aha, it was you? No, the yeah, whole none time. Of, no, yeah, yeah, none of that ever happens. It becomes it's down completely to our independent final of people. them. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. I think there is, as far as resolution for what we want to feel, I think there should be more involvement in that. But well, other Jallo movies seem to always have like. Um, not always, but often your main character is, well, a lot of times it's a stranger in a, in a strange place right. who then becomes the focus of like a potential suspect or a witness in a murder. And then they kind of have to become an amateur detective. Mm-hmm. This movie puts you in the kind of in the perspective of the accused, right? Mm-hmm. It's all the potential suspects talking yes. amongst themselves as the detective is like going through going like, is it you? Did you do mm-hmm. it? The detective, and this is also, I guess, I think a Jallo trope. The poli- actual police detectives are usually like a hundred percent wrong yeah. in yeah. their deduction yep. of the case because he's like, yes. it's a sex murder. <laughs> it's a sex uh, maniac. <laughs> Some sex, sex maniac, maniac out yeah. there killing people. Yep, he's like, going uh, after beautiful women. Yeah. And it's like there's no like we're gonna there's have to no stop reason, and start over again. Like that's his only thing to go on for the, being a sex maniac right like there's no like real sexual motivation to any of these right it, it almost feels like from um uh the um oh what's her name the the movie with uh what's uh what's his name who thought it, there was a there was a, a gay involvement between the son and the and the repair guy um and he stuck with that what was the, what was the fucking movie it was a uh, mystery with, uh, <laughs> shit, hold on. I, 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 hold on. Hold on. I just need. To, I need. Did we seconds. watch it? A movie, we yes. a movie we did. Yes. Hold on. I need two seconds. But I'll in this, it. in this case, I feel like it would have worked if the rapper with the milk. We watch a lot with some yeah. Milk. Like, yeah. Kind of it down. Oh, butcher baker, butcher nightmare baker, nightmare maker. Nightmare. Oh, okay, okay. With what's his name from the Walking Tall movies? Yeah. Um, who, who, yeah. It's almost like that. He's okay. like he had a thought. It's like oh, they obviously had a gay relationship. They're clearly gay like, together. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Really? It feels like that. It's I like, feel where like where are you in, pulling this from? Yeah. And I feel like in this case, the, there needed to be a wraparound. Like where the the end of the movie, like the cop still has it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. It's like, well, like, damn it, you know. And in the end, clearly, he was the sex maniac. <laughs> right. Like, and I, yeah, I, he's I like, and in the end, I was right all along. Yeah. He tries to walk yeah. away. And it's like you, you weren't. I kind of right. I kind of like how in a lot of Giallo movies, like cops are kind of bumbling idiots. Right? They don't really help anything. Right. I really? kind of if like they're some not of them, the murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's actually it, right? That's like if yeah. if they're a sharp, then that means that they're, they're right. usually if they're, they're not, killer. then yeah. they're just scene filler, basically. All right, yeah. So <laughs> I've we, seen this before. Yeah. We may have <laughs> talked about this before, but I'm going to ruin movies of this type that's for fine. you, right? Because mm-hmm. I noticed this movie did it. There's always a scene. Okay, you ready? You ready, folks at home? <laughs> There's always a scene in a movie like this when you're trying to figure out who the killer is. Mm. There's always this because you have like six suspects, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Or six six potential victims. Are you right? thinking the lineup where Clarice is in front of them? No, I'm oh, thinking okay. there was a scene because what you have to do is the as the filmmaker, right? You have to blend the killer in with the rest of the victims. Yes. And so yeah. there always has to be a scene where you think you saw the killer being threatened. Mm-hmm. Somebody came to the door and it was a shadow and she freaked out and oh it was oh, the milkman or whatever. You. Or it's like, oh, it's getting all tense, and like she thinks that there's a point of view shot, and it's a cat. And in this one, 
I think it was uh, when the madam was like she had shown all the other girls out. Yeah, she, and the lights mm-hmm. went off. The lights they? went yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And then she's like, ooh. And she freaked out and she ran behind the uh, the door and closed it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, she's hiding from that killer. But then that scene never went anywhere. But you have a lingering sense that mm-hmm. you saw her being threatened. Yeah. And then that eliminates her as mm-hmm. a potential yes. killer. Mm-hmm. I think there's some things they do in the third act of the movie that lean into that too like when she's out on the balcony at the end crawling on the facade of the house mm. and grabs on the pipe and falls it's like like oh it's weird because I thought she was the bad guy right. yeah you Unless know we've yeah run into a double cross right yeah. exactly because that's what's going on but they right? do that with the, the men too where you you like you were saying where they try and blend them in because they have the lineup of the six men and so you have them all there and it's like all right it's probably one of these but then they they all uh, or at least a few of them give their arguments as to like, uh, especially to the old ladies, like, no, you idiot, it's him. <laughs> and so they give their own arguments as to like who is who and what is what. And you can kind of eliminate a few people from that, I think. It's just like, okay, he doesn't quite make sense based on his performance, but. Mm. It, yeah, because yeah. that's, uh, that's my problem when I always trying to watch uh, mystery movies. I can never tell if it's like. If some of the actor's performance is intentional yeah. or some of it's unintentional, because sometimes right. you're like, it's that guy. But then it was like, no, it's just the way he was acting. <laughs> no, he's right. just an idiot. You know, yeah. It's like, well, wouldn't he know that, you know. Uh, right. Also, the suspect is usually the calmest person in the Right, which is why I thought mustache like. guy was. <laughs> yeah. He's like, and he just looked. He, had he seems look. like a calm yeah. killer. Yeah. yeah. And he, when he was like, oh, yeah, you introduced me to her once, right? I casually know her. Yeah. Right, yeah. I was like, well, that's something a killer would say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lineups in Italy are done face to face. Face to face. Where you can insult and, and badger the witness who's coming in to identify you. Yeah. I make, it makes you realize why. It was like, oh, all right, we're going to put a wall and some glass. Explained a lot people. about the Amanda Knox case, didn't it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. man. The police work in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, so, but that's the, the thing, I guess, that it's doing at that point in time, right? It's like, okay, if these five guys, these are the guys. We've seen the killer. Right. Killer's a guy. Uh, you know, it's like, so what? One of them has to be the killer. So then the police lock them all up because apparently you could do that at that point in time in Italy. We're just going to hold them all. Yeah. And so all the women are like, okay, we're going to go home. We're kind of freaked out because there's a killer running around. But, you know, they're like, they're all, all the guys are locked up. Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to have uh, the girl who got um, suffocated. The suffocated. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Or no, no. She wasn't the suffocated one. No, she was the one with the burn face. The, the burn face the happened. Yeah. yeah. Because she's like, I took care of it all. I went and got the last girl, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and burned her face. Yeah. So, I mean, some of that, I guess what I was saying, is is it's like it's gory for the time, maybe? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't... I think for effect. 1963, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it stands out. I think this is also part of the DNA of, like, you know, the Jallo and then the slasher would just lean into, like, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, make the set pieces murders gory. I think, too, the thing about this movie is it's a lot of, like, strangulation and a lot of, like, fighting and stuff. And yes. I don't know, for me, like, sometimes strangulation is worse than, like, stabbing and stuff because it's so, Because like, it takes longer. It takes so long. Yeah. And you got time pers- to think about personal. your death at that point, yeah. And, like, it's, it's really rage, hard man. to fight off yeah. someone that's trying to strangle you. Like, right. it's way harder to fight also, off, I heard you it's know? also really hard to strangle someone. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, well, was, so, do you remember uh, it says with, a, <laughs> with uh, exact confidence? But like he, they have a whole wrestling match before she even gets her face burned, and yeah. that's when he pulls out the notebook and writes down where is the diary and holds it up to her face. That part was amazing. Yeah, Love that. yeah. Well, which is it doesn't make it. It makes sense only from a movie perspective because like if you're gonna kill this person, it really doesn't matter if they hear your yeah, voice. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> true. Right, right. Yeah. But we can't let the movie know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. he's got to write notes. Um. <laughs> Which is a, a reveal later on. Which I didn't think was a reveal. I thought it was a fake out. Chekhov's notebook. Uh, yeah, Chekhov's very yeah. detailed notebook. Yeah. I'm just like, why mm-hmm. are they giving it away? Mm-hmm. Well, there's got to be more to it at that point. And there is. Yeah, Second but they do. They, they do give it away. I mean, they but do. yeah, but they do like just kind of all of a sudden reveal the killer to yeah, you. Yeah, it's like, the... oh, that's him. No, it is him. Like, yeah. Yeah. it is. Yeah. But you're like, there's something more to it. There'd have to be because he was, you know, mm-hmm. locked up with all the other ones and. So they he couldn't have committed murder. this murder. Ah. And they're letting him go, but then he has the yeah the the note the killer's yeah, notebook, and you're like, oh man, it's him. And the cops like, I gave them all an alibi. I gave it to them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and this cop has moments of clarity, and then we don't see him anymore for that. So he's like, that was 
my fault. <laughs> and then we don't. I see think him that anymore. was it, right? Yeah, he checked was, out of the yeah, movie at that, that point. Yeah. Um, but he then, just quit and went away. He's like, damn. He's like, I'm, I'm not going a good on de- holiday now. Right, I'm not a good detective. <laughs> But so then we get the the scenes, which I suppose you have to do at that point, because you're like, well, if Cameron Mil- Mitchell is the killer, like what's going on here? So he and the madam, we're saying to the madam, Christina or whatever, they yes. meet yeah. and have their, uh, here's why we did what we did scene, yeah. right? And she's like, I killed her, but I hated doing it. It's horrible. And, you know, yes. but he's like, you know what? They're going to keep looking for this mm-hmm. sex maniac, and until they do, they're ne- they're we're always going to be under suspicion. Yeah. Right. So we got so pin we, it on someone. We got to pin it on someone. We got to pin it on a sex maniac. They don't. Do they actually say who they're going to pin it on? Well, that's when that's when they kill the the one girl in the bathtub. Yeah, and they tried to make it look like a suicide. Yeah, but that, she's right. But she's married. Isn't she married to the what's his name? Not the, that guy with the mustache. No, no. no. Oh. She was the, um, one, the one who lived off by the herself. The one that was going to go to Paris. Okay. She lived in the house with the countess. That's right. Christina was yeah. the countess. Yeah. With yeah. her husband, her and her husband or yeah. something. Yeah. She lives in the house that they, because he was like, I used to come out there all the time. Yeah. This it's is not, why it's easy for the killer to be answer. anybody. Because <laughs> right. it's just like, these storylines are are not... They're not clear. It doesn't feel like mm-hmm. it's just like it's perfect. I think it's yeah. purposely it's messy. Perfect, yeah. 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 I, I like her. Her death scene I find to be really cool. I remember the first time I saw this, it was one of the clips on that Bravo's 100 scariest movie. Oh, moments. Was it? They showed the clip of her being drowned in the bathtub. That yeah. was the first time I ever saw anything from this movie. That one's good. Yeah. It's there effective. Is a, there is a wrist slitting where the blood just leaks into the frame. Like yeah. blooms onto her face. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's this poor actress though, having to be underwater with water. her eyes open a, a lot. Yeah. A lot scene. of water. I, I think like, that's oh. what's freaky about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The mm-hmm. camera's in the water and her face is being pushed into the, yes. yeah. and I don't know if that's like the earliest version of that shot. Yeah. Again, I don't know if Hitchcock has already been in, in some of these cases. Mm-hmm. You're talking yeah. about the strange Mm-hmm. And, and stuff like that. I remember, was it Torn Curtain? Was There was a movie that Hitchcock made where there is like a knockdown drag out, like the strangulation takes like five minutes. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, it's, it feels clumsy when you watch it now, but his intention then was to say like, no, this is a really horrible murder. Yes. It takes a while, you yeah. know, and now you he have wanted like, to do it in like real time. Yeah. 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 And now you, know you have like these like, glorious bastards or something. Right. They had a really horrible fine one. You know, Go. they, they do that in like court trials, right? Like they will s- straight up like set a stopwatch and make everyone in the court be quiet to show how long a strangulation takes. When it's on trial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's See, that shit's brutal. effective. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, all right. mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. It took this long for this woman to die. Mm hmm. Strangulation's what? fucked, man. It's it. I will say it gets overlooked as far as like a horrible on-screen kill. Probably, I think, you yeah. Know? That's because I don't think anybody these days <laughs> makes it take that long. Yeah, no, yeah. That's and it's true. over in that's thirty true, seconds yeah. or something yeah. like that. But mm-hmm. Inglorious yes. Bastards. Yeah, yeah. You want to see a? Uh, <laughs> that's rough. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> um, so a double cross begins here because even though I'm not sure who they were intending to pin this murder on, perhaps they said, but. Cameron Mitchell, because he's going to try and inherit all of Christina's stuff. Because I guess it is he. She owns it. It's her salon, mm-hmm. her house, her money. Right that mm-hmm. he's weaseling into. Okay. And he's like, if I take her out, so he when she's in committing the murder, he knocks on the door to freak her out, and then he's gone and clipped the uh, yeah. The, the, the wire holding up the, the pipe, the post that is around the corner. Uh, but he, the really, way he, really relying on her to go that way. And yeah. it's, a, it's quite it's an elaborate trap. It makes you wonder if it was a plan they had talked about before or something. Well, right? It, it, you was. Know? it was. It was. Yeah. 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 Was it? Because that she was going to go on the balcony? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because because said, if anything because, happens, okay, just go gotcha. on her. Right. On the balcony. But, like, go the but even yeah, still, yeah. she would have to reach on that specific pipe to, like, you know, right. get it. But um, this is like, I love the way like the hand with the tin snips like creeps around the window <laughs> yes. into frame like the hand itself lurks in this movie yeah. every yeah. time it comes into frame speaking of hands lurking one thing i didn't mention no, this is a sidebar last week when we watched um what should we call it um down oh, the shaft yeah. 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 do you remember the, the the shot where he's on top of the elevator and he's looking around and a hand comes mm. in yes the yeah. and oh it's his God. fucking hand it's his hand that's the most egregious in hand sh- it was that was Holly. awful yeah, was, i know oh my god he's looking around and it literally is a hand that comes from the side and it's yeah. just like 
He scratches his chin. Then he scratches yeah. his face. Yeah. like, yeah. you motherfucker. Yeah. 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 But so again, bummed. Yes. Yes. Continue. You missed a good one. Um, yeah. And welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so... Um, so she falls off. She, I mean, she grabs that book. Yeah, falls so we off think she's the dead. But well, the scene after but we that, know she's not because we don't see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> was that what keyed you in? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't think like yeah. we didn't see anything. We don't see a dead body. She's yeah. still going on. Well, that only occurred to me, I guess, when you see him alone and there's like this creeping shot through the, the mm. salon. You're like, OK, who else is left? It has to be her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she survived and she's come back for her revenge. And then it has a kind of an ending that is, um, I think. You know, the impact of it, if there was any, has been diluted over the years. You know, that's the thing. Like Watching it now, it just kind of like, oh, okay, everything's all wrapped up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and- diluted over the years, over what other movies you've seen in this genre, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Well, what happens? Uh, she returns, uh, and she embraces him. Because he's like, no, no, the, yeah. you're you're wrong. I wasn't yeah. trying to kill you at right. all. And and there also was it's the uh, whole the whole like you never wanted me. You only wanted my money. Yes, and she's holding her palm full of jewelry diamonds and, and diamonds and, yeah. and everything. But there was Chekhov's gun earlier introduced, slammed on the table. Uh-huh. This is now not there. And so they embrace, <laughs> and uh, Cameron Mitchell gets two to the abdomen and dies. And then that's it, right? Yep. Is she dying? Yeah, yeah, she flops she's, over yeah, on she him. Does, okay. She's, dying. if nothing else, severely injured. Yeah. Who knows what the police will find when they show up? Yeah, because we have a. She does call the police on the red phone, which is left hanging mm-hmm. at the That's end of the, the movie. Of the yep. movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. she says the awning, the store awning, broke, <laughs> broke her fall. So That's who knows? Yeah. So it looked she, like she was killing over him. It kind of seemed like she died at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll only go with the dying. Otherwise, she gets to kind of write her own story at the end. It would be interesting to see. But let's just say she dies. Yep. That's why I was like, this is the point where I want that cop to come in and be like, I was right. He's the sex media. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, I knew it the whole time. It's like, you were wrong, my friend. But they're dead. Yeah. yeah, so I guess that's uh, that's uh, that wraps up the movie. So there was a, a black lace uh, nighty. So there was there blood. was there yeah. was. Well, I was lace. looking for black. Yeah. There was black yeah. lace. Yes, <laughs> and we, I, wanted, I wanted to make sure. And, and at the yeah. freak show, we love to call out Italian. Uh, nightwear because it's always it's always interesting. Something. It's always mm-hmm. something. Well, you who made the comment? I think it was Sean. No, it was during the movie that it was like you know it's like well it's uh, art directed really well. And it was like, I think that's all they're doing or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's, a, that's all they know. Yeah. 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 If nothing else, it's just like they can art direct the shit out of yes. a scene. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. the fashion, fashion and art. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. The f- we haven't talked enough about the fashion in this movie. Like, it's just because beautiful. it's beautiful. I mean, it's like 1964. It's like the height of that style. But it is. Yeah. Every shot of this movie is gorgeous to look at from yeah. the fashion, the set design, it's the that, cinematography. It's that great period where it's like post 50s, but pre mod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's like it's, that middle. Oh, it's right. great. They haven't, I, but I don't think they they haven't learned to let loose yet because they haven't gotten to the 70s. They haven't everyone, had right. key parties yet. Right. Well, everyone's <laughs> hairstyles up and curled yeah. and very Well, that's, that's what safe. I mean. It's, it's and we haven't pre- gotten to the 70s where it's all down and we're just like free love. Baby. Yeah, because this is like pre sexual revolution. Yes. So it's pre like the modern. Right. Like, so it's still know, buttoned up yeah. we haven't gotten to that let yeah. loose mm-hmm. style yeah. yet we just left poodle skirts just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're getting there yeah. well that's what you were saying Holly during the movie it's like there's no nudity in it mm-hmm. Yeah, there are you know I mean I remember a scene where a woman gets her shirt ripped so yeah, she's in her bra, bra and I'm like that's like that, scandalous. It's that, probably well, scandalous, the, but it's yeah. also like those are the illustrations that would be on yes. the on a yellow oh, cover. It's on the poster for this movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the poster for this movie. I think the fucking awesome. Those are still on the like the detective covers. Yeah, that I used to yeah. Find my dad's yeah. Drawer. right. Yeah, 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 the woman in the corner going. Oh! And there's a shadow of a gun on her. Yeah, I think the her, most risque part in this was after she's killed in the bathtub. Probably. And she, yeah. She, you can like see through her bra and stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's yes. the most risque. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess yeah, we're still a couple of years away, probably yeah. from uh, allowing that or going mainstream. I yeah. suppose with actual nudity in movies, um, and then the graphic violence would also follow. So yes. this is like on the we're we're getting we're there. getting we're, there we're still, on we're the ratcheting up. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we're gonna go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Blood and Black Lace. But first, we're gonna read some of your mail. In order to do that, we're gonna have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I wonder what he thinks when we watch Giallo, because, like, I don't know what his... His, like, he probably thinks Suspiria invented Giallo, right? Or do you think he's absorbed more by now? I, mean, he, I do he, wonder the education level of, of he, Like, how much Igor is he taking in of what we're talking about? Right, is he giving, yeah. like, scholarly talks places without <laughs> us knowing it? Like, what? you're right, what, what, what information does he, does he absorb? What, what does he do he Sunday through Friday? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, he's actually an assistant professor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's an adjunct. Ed, <laughs> he's educating yeah, people he's somewhere. That's frightening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. He's colorblind, though, so he doesn't <laughs> understand <laughs> he's, the colors. He does. Yeah, he wouldn't understand, right? He's like, I am, unfortunately. Holly won't get this, but I think that it's, I think what you're implying is that he's the adjunct to Samara Weaving in Scream Six. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I understand because I read the, <laughs> I read our social media post about it, and I was furious. I commented on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I left a comment can on our have, social media. Can we media. read our own comments on social media? Um, <laughs> Holly, you need to watch Scream Six so you can see the dumbest woman to ever exist in the world. The on dumbest screen, yeah. movie professor in the world. It, Movie professor. I would say mm. dumbest woman because no woman's like I said on the episode. No woman's instincts she would tell her make to do any of those things. Oh, God. It's yeah. unfortunate. Ugh. Yep. Well, we wanted more for Smart Weaving. Mm-hmm. You were saying we you did. commented. Sorry, I didn't print that one out because it was a comment. We can't comment on our own stuff. Why not? I wasn't have... here okay. for it. Yeah. Right. True. If you're not here for it, you can comment. All right. If you can pull it up, we'll read it on or if you our. What it said. Okay. I, don't know. I don't remember what it said. <laughs> um, but the good folks at home can comment by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter at Sat Freak Show. Or they can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. <laughs> or you can follow why did, on why did we all do it? Uh, Instagram <laughs> at Saturday Night Freak Show. Because <laughs> Sean that's and a, I that's both a new do thing. it whenever you're not here. We yeah. decided that me and McKellar are going to do it the tag team at the same time uh, when you're not yeah, here. Yeah, and, and so you were here, like, let's so. all get together. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm being set up. What is this? <laughs> well, uh, MF Mad, the keeper of oh, the yes. Saturday Night service. Freak Show, yes. Wall of Famous, thank you very much, has uh, not only a Mario Bava, but one mm-hmm. other person from this movie movie is now on the wall and that's Harriet Meaden. Okay. Medine? Oh. Medine. I think it's Medine. Welcome to the hallway. Okay, yeah. so she was <laughs> yes. uh, Clarissa. The Was she oh. a housemaid or Clarissa? Yes. Clarice. Yeah. Clari- uh, it says Clarissa okay. here. Clarice. Clarice. She was the one who picked everybody out of the lineup mm-hmm. in right, this movie. You're right, you're right. Uh, she was also in Death Race 2000. She was Clarice in this movie. She was Clarice yes. in this movie. Okay, <laughs> and she was also the neighbor in the drop of water segment of Black Sabbath. The one who tries to take the ring yeah, off okay. the dead woman's finger. Um, okay, about Blood and Black Lace, Robin Lineman Silverberg says, you had me at bongos. This is one of my favorite <laughs> scores. We it's didn't talk about that. Yeah. Score. Mm, it, is oh, it is good. So I do like good. it. It's like horn and bongo. Yeah, wax mm-hmm. work. Where's my vinyl of Blood and Black Lace? I'm sure it's got to be out there. Horn and That's a great restaurant, horn and bongo. Horn and bongo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker says, I love listening to the episodes even when I have nothing to contribute. I always get to learn new things about the horror genre Indeed, well, thank you so we're hoping that so nice. uh, hopefully you learn something because those are the only two comments we got about blood and black lace that mm-hmm. makes me think that not a whole lot of you have seen it so maybe this That's is weird. <laughs> weird. Yeah. Yeah. 1960 yeah, yeah. We're, we're going don't uh, worry colin early. tomorrow bloody disgusting will be like why you should revisit blood and black lace <laughs> this, this, is true. Likely. this is true it'll, um it'll happen that's right well we're almost almost at an anniversary in 2024 then so all right okay. 64. Uh, about last week's movie, which was Down, which you probably shaft. know as The Shaft. Yeah. Uh, Morris writes in and says, Down is a fun ride, although I prefer the original, The Lift. Uh, please, please, please do Amsterdam. That's also by the same director, Dick <laughs> yeah. Moss. Uh, he says it's an incredible aquatic slasher that rules so hard that it'll be in your top 10 slashers in no time. So you I, just added another element to it that I didn't know. Aquatic slasher? I like, did, said that. Yeah, did we? He said he was like a frogman or yeah. something, right? Oh, yeah. 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 See, every time we keep he talking about this. comes up and he kills people and yeah. he disappears into the canals. Guys, I'm all in on Dick yeah, Moss. I'm uh, all uh, in. Uh, all, yeah. all in on Dick Moss. Let's bring more. The director's name is Dick Moss. <laughs> But it's M A A S. You really Moss, missed out. Dick Moss. Dick Moss. I know. You yeah. really did. You know what? I didn't choose it, okay? I didn't choose it. Uh, Mark Harrison says, Oh, I saw the lift. It was interesting. I, w- I, I want to see the lift, lift now. now yeah, yeah, I do want to see the lift as mm-hmm. a comparison. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, B. Shaw Foolery says, damn, that movie ran off the path at the end. An evil <laughs> DARPA made AI reject. <laughs> Ron is. Perlman and Michael Ironside arguing in a car. It it's... was a crazy but fun watch. It went yeah. places. I was trying to describe it to my husband today, and I was like, I don't want to spoil it for Holly, but I was just like, and then they said this, and then they said this, and as I was hearing myself say it, I'm like, this sounds so yeah. like incoherent when you try to boil it down to sentences. Yeah, yeah. I've had a bad month. Yeah, <laughs> sucks. Uh, the week before, we watched a movie called Scream Six. We did indeed. Sure did. Mm -hmm. And Holly yeah. wrote in. I did write in. I did write in. I wrote in about your post about Samara weaving. Um, what did you say? Uh, oh, that she was a professor, a professor of, of slasher, slasher movies. movies. Yes. What are they teaching kids in school these days? And I said, because I couldn't believe what I was reading. Yes. I said, a professor of slasher movies? Come on. How hard would it have been to come up with a real class? Genre screenplay writing is a real course. Yeah. Just have the current subject be slasher movies. It's like they're not even trying. It, yeah. Well, this is what I was talking about. The movie where in they, they are like just writing on a, on a very level. surface level, yeah. very shallow level of yeah. like, we've name checked these things. We just call them slasher. It, it doesn't yeah, get they, deep. They, they're just checking off the boxes. Oh, we mentioned Giallo, but we didn't mention any specific Giallo movies. It feels Whereas, very I'm easy. I'm sorry, those original movies would have rattled off like 10 Giallo mm, movies in, in one breath. You How know? hard. And they're, yeah, but again, they weren't really thinking. But, but again, they weren't thinking movies in that yeah. in that movie, but so it didn't matter. They're supposed to be NYU. I mean, they have a film program. No, they, there's a different name. They say the name of the yeah, school. Yeah, that's right. It's a fake school. Oh, I it's think. Blackmore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. I was going to say maybe it would make sense if it was Blackmore University. Yeah. That's a reference. Like Richie Black. Yeah, I was yeah. like, that, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. Uh, so that they put thought into. Uh, they put thought into. There's it, several it, other. Yeah. Well, no, oh. they put thought into it in as much as they name the college and don't do anything yep. within the college. The college doesn't matter. The college doesn't matter. The it does, it literally it sounds doesn't like exist. nothing matters. Oh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> most of it. Yeah. 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 No, no. What matters? This is the Seinfeld what of matters? slasher movies. Set yeah. pieces because they took the wrong message from our comments of the first one. Yeah. And they're just like, it'll be all set pieces. Yep. And that's it. We can't get, we got to stop. Well, otherwise, we're going to yeah. go for another. Well, like, I got a couple time, more so. comments okay. here right. about Scream 6. Travis Legler writes in and says, given the fact that people would be pissed if, oh. Um, Roger L. Jackson? Yeah. What we're talking about? Yeah. Uh, being the voice of um, Ghostface and never being above the, he's never in the opening He should credits. get opening. No. Yeah. We yeah. think he should. Uh, yeah. And Travis he says, is. given the fact that people would be pissed, is it Robert or Roger? I thought it was Roger. I thought it was Roger. It is, um, no, it is. Uh, 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 you posted it wrong. You oh, called okay. him Robert. Yeah, I, right, I went Roger. through and I changed oh, it in okay. our comment. So Travis comments with Robert, Robert but he okay. means Roger because that's what it should have been. Okay, so, so Roger. it is Roger L. Jackson. Yes. So uh, Travis says, I'm a little surprised he hasn't given credit in the titles. After this many movies, he's earned it. It's like Kevin Conroy as Batman, may he rest in peace. You can't think of Ghostface without Roger's voice. Yeah, yeah. Scream it's, doesn't exist anymore without yeah. his voice. I know. That's it. I know. He better be negotiating a fucking awesome I hope, deal. Yeah. I want to meet him at, at a convention. This point, you know, it's like he is the voice of Like, he is one guy I would pay for a cameo. Is he not doing conventions? I have never seen him at one. He should. But I, he should. He would make bank. I would pay to meet him. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Well, I think, but I, th well, I think that's why he does cameo, because of his voice. Yeah. Him. Like, you can... Well, like let me tell a... you that Doug Jones will do live in person cameos at Ooh. uh he had, when I met Doug Jones, he had like all these different things you could buy from him. And one of them was a personalized voicemail message. Like you pay him right there and he'll record your voicemail oh. for you. So yeah, like, I would, see I Roger see... L. Jackson should be doing that. Roger L. You know? Yeah, and like yeah. I would meet Roger yeah. L. Jackson. I don't yeah. want to meet anybody else. I'd meet him. <laughs> like you're fucking awesome, mm -hmm. sir. Uh Richard Kratzer writes in and says Jenna Ortega is clearly like five foot something. Even in oh, Doc yeah. Martin, yeah. there's no way she could be considered as a goat f ghost face. No. Maybe she'd be a threat to the core four foot and under club. <laughs> I still like this Scooby Doo gang though. I, is she is she the killer? I'm not saying. Oh, oh sorry. Can't uh <laughs> Everyone's a suspect. But, Every, yeah. yeah, Melissa uh, Barrera is like towering over her in that yeah, movie. Truly, when they're standing yeah. side by side, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Ryan Harnish says there was so much negativity about this one on your show. It's not a perfect movie, but it wasn't a piece of shit. Uh, I, I said agree. that. I said it was way better than Halloween ends. So. Uh, yeah, well, I don't think any of us ever called it a piece of shit. We yeah. do have, I mean, I me specifically had a lot of problems with that movie. I yeah. wouldn't call it a piece of shit. It's still a very well I still made recommended movie. it. 
Yeah, I'm I still recommended it. Yeah, yeah really? she's yeah. on some bullshit about. It. I, I need to recommend it so we get more. You recommended Halloween Ends. You had no, because it had something no, interesting to no say. No leg to stand Whoa. on. No leg to stand on. Here. I think so because your reasoning was. Uh, I don't agree, with, but whatever. Let's I don't agree on. with your reasoning either, but you still did it. I think mine's more solid. But uh, let's move okay, on. All right, all right. Hey, but you guys are both correct. Uh, uh, but, I mean, probably. <laughs> let's put it that way. We both are. Uh, we're both wrong for different reasons. There you go. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much for writing in we really appreciate it each and every one of you yes that's why we do what we do mm-hmm. now we're gonna go around holly so since you're back thought of this i'm back you're back you go first what do you, you think what was it about? called uh blood, blood and black lace <laughs> 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 uh blood and black lace um it's it's not the it's not the most exciting Jalo movie. It is not. Um, there's a lot of long shots that I'm just not sure what they're trying to do. Um, but it's a beautiful movie. It's I I can see why this influenced so many films after it. It's really gorgeous. It's it's interesting. Um. Visually speaking, it's interesting. Um, yeah, the the story's not really giving you much that you haven't already seen. Um, like I said, not the most exciting, but I think just it's stunning. It's a really gorgeous movie. Um, I think just the history of Jalo and what and the role that this plays. I think you got to watch it. Um, uh, yeah, it's not my favorite Baba. It's not my favorite Jalo. Um, I tend to like, I tend to like the more um, intense storytelling. Um, yeah, there's no uh, b- uh, bullet yeah. shots through peepholes in this yeah. movie. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not, it, but but yeah, like we keep saying, the set pieces are so gorgeous and it's so dramatic in style that I mean, I think you got to watch it just for that. I I loved um, last night in Soho, and this pulls a lot from that, or this, mm-hmm. uh, that pulled a lot from this movie, a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I love the style of the '60s, the fashion. I love, I love the ambiance, the whole feel of it. So yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna recommend it. Not the most exciting, not my favorite, but it's beautiful enough that I think you gotta watch it. Michaela, what did you think? This is my favorite Giallo movie. Um, this oh. is one I've watched a couple times, and I when I saw Last Night in Soho, like from the beginning, I was like, I feel like I know where this movie's gonna yeah. go from the jump. And I mean, there is differences, but. I don't think there's enough differences. Like, I, I think you could even maybe have a lawsuit, you know, but um, I but I do love that Edgar Wright is making movies inspired by movies like this. You mm-hmm. know, I really love that. I think wish he would make more movies more often because of that. Um, and people were I think were a little too hard on last night. in Soho. I heard I, some pretty yeah, harsh criticism. I, I did so not too. think it was fair of that movie. Um, but no, the, the aesthetic of this movie is just such a time capsule, but it's so well crafted and so lovingly done. And it's just everything is gorgeous to look at. And it's just I love the camera work. I love the painting behind the changing booths. I love the way mm-hmm. that the. I remember seeing that bathtub scene as a kid and just being like, what the fuck is this? Like the mask really creeped me out. Mm-hmm. The like faceless kind of get up. And I mean, clearly, like, there's a direct connection between, like, we said that and Rorschach and Darkman and all these other things. So this movie, like, if you do, like, a family tree of the cinema, this is going to be the root of so many movies, you know? But I do love this movie. It is a little slower. It's not as exciting as some of the later Giallos. But mm-hmm. like like I said, I do feel like it is the Halloween of Giallos and that it kickstarted this whole, like, subgenre. I, I I think yeah. If you if you like Last Night in Soho, or even if you like The Love Witch, I was thinking about The Love Witch watching this too. That's a dry movie. Oh, that movie's slow and boring, <laughs> but it looks gorgeous. Yeah. It looks just like this movie, but it was made in what like 2016, you yeah. know. Um, so The Love Witch is yeah, unfortunately not as exciting as it looks, but this you know, this is just such a unique little piece that you got to watch it. I mean, I it's great title. It delivers on both of those things. I love like the 60s aesthetic and just like i feel like the italian i mean the italians obviously elevate the quality of anything they do it seems like most of the time but italian fashion is a whole nother mm-hmm. level you know so it's i mean if the like last night in soho is not as elevated as this movie i don't think um but yeah you gotta recommend it it's iconic you know and the mm-hmm. killer is iconic and like we said it's not often you actually get to see the giallo killer on screen you gotta watch it sean what do you think 
I think I'm going a little opposite everybody here. Um, I think the way I feel about this movie is the way uh, I have been introduced to uh, Giallo at large. Had this come before a bunch of the Giallos that we've watched before, I might find it more interesting. Tonight, I was particularly bored um, by this movie, or at least, if nothing else, the last half of it. Uh, mm-hmm. When we got to the ending, um, I, it felt very familiar. Um, I do like the aesthetic of the movie. Again, the colors, mm-hmm. I think, are great in this movie. And I, I love that uh, Baba uses those. I've loved later work, like we said, Black Sabbath and everything, which I think is uh, I, I had a lot of fun with. Um, no, this is too this this movie feels too. I don't know if it's the movie or what I've seen, but it feels too slow. It feels too. The mystery was not um, exceptionally interesting to me in the discovery. I think the the story of everyone involved with this movie wasn't too clear on what their motivations were. Um, yeah, I. it's hard to come to one that is kind of looked at as a, a, a classic in the genre and look at it and be like, I don't recommend it. I, th- I think... Um, I think it's easy to recommend this movie and I think I could easily recommend this movie, but it just didn't, you know, I didn't feel it tonight and I don't think it's very, I don't think it's a very exciting movie. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's just the way I'm feeling tonight, if I'm feeling about the genre No, in I general. get it. Like, I recommend it just because of the stylistically. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I can't, yeah. I, I can't do that tonight because I think yeah. it's too slow. I don't think it gives you uh, enough. I think there are far more. If I had to point to a giallo, it would not be this one for you to go watch. I think I've seen more exciting ones, more interesting ones, um, uh, ones with better characters and better stories. So I'm going to pass on Blood and Black Lace tonight. Uh, just didn't do it for me. It's, you know, not all of them can. Uh, I think I've been pretty up on most of the ones we've watched in the past, but not tonight. Can't do this one. So I'm going to pass on that. Colin, take us home. Well, I mean, I think my recommendation is going to be based on more of its historical significance, yeah. I suppose. You know, it's like because, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things that the, uh, the genre there's maybe the 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 lane that it's in is not very wide <laughs> right of this type of movie right. so there's only so much that you can do within it and we've seen so many iterations yes. that you know there's nothing that i guess to us watching it in 20 uh 23 would be shocking or you know is a surprise right and currently <clears throat> i can't get over that so um you know it's like but i like uh you know well, I guess it's twofold. It's like number one, uh, you know, as a, uh, a, a historical document on like the on the you know progression of the horror genre, uh, a showcase for Mario Bava and his um, directorial flourishes. Um, but also, I mean, like as a movie, it like I I did, and granted, Sean, I have seen it more times than you, <laughs> but like this time, you know, watching it, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get who everybody, I get what they, you know, what their motivations sure. are. Like I was able to pick all that stuff up, so it's like, okay, it's written in a way that it is contained. Like a lot of stuff seems like it is explained, but it's still hard to keep track of like who's who you know, their names and, you know, it it is kind of all jumbled together, I think, by design. So it's trying to be a mystery. So I guess if it wasn't a foundational building block of the genre, it would probably be less of a, you know, something to recommend. But I think because it is like this, you know, you can, as Michaela said, you can see, you know, the influence that this movie has had on, um, on horror movies, you know, um, it's like, it, it just became like incorporated into the DNA of the, of the genre. Mm. Um, that's, I guess the most interesting part of it, but, uh, I think it has a little mystery movie. It also, it works, you know, um, you just yeah your patience with movies from 1964 i guess <laughs> well, uh, may vary but yeah i mean i would definitely recommend you got to check it out blood and black lace it doesn't feel like a 1964 movie that's because it's all cleaned it up what it yeah i mean feels maybe more that's modern? It. It looked, well because it it's more, italian yeah, yeah i think europe they were able to do you know especially like there's characters who are cocaine addicts you know yeah. oh yeah uh there's a little bit of risque stuff there's um uh violence that i think at the time probably would have been like 
oh my god you know mm-hmm. we think of it as like well that was pretty tame but it was like oh, he put that glove with those you know things in her face yes uh, you know drown this woman graphically in yep. a bathtub you know it's like we're just numb to it now yes. through what we've seen but i think it was probably fairly shocking in 1964 i don't think it did very well at the box office it wasn't really appreciated in its home country it um was later found um by fans and then you know kind of its mm-hmm. appeal grew so mm-hmm. next week we're gonna watch oh wait oh, uh yeah. I, I do have a question no um i mean you want to watch more jala movies duh yeah 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 <laughs> just space them out yeah. just space them out that's all that's all i ask i can only pick a movie every four weeks okay anyway space them out farther than that. <laughs> so next Colin, week follow your heart there you go next week we're gonna be watching a movie that's chosen by sean <laughs> what are we watching next week all right next week um 10 years ago my first pick on this show was the evil dead because we had an Evil Dead movie coming out in theaters. Sure, sure. I figure that'd be a great uh, uh, one to get Aww. us into that. So now we're going to pick that movie that was coming out in theaters <laughs> because we have another Evil Dead movie coming out in theaters. Ten years later. Ten years later. So to sum it all up, we will be watching 2013's Evil Dead by Fede Alvarez. Oh, I love Which, that. The unrated. <laughs> director's cut? The director's cut. Right, we will I've go not full, seen the director's r- cut. Neither have I, so awesome. we will go full director's cut on this. Awesome. Love okay. It. All right. I have it. Yeah. I have a copy I know. of it. So I know. This is why I was uh, watching we'll do it. All right. So uh, we hope you will join us next week for the Evil Dead 2013. Mm-hmm. 2013. 2013. Yes. Uh, 10 years. Yep. yep. That's right. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, all Did right. you not listen to my yeah, whole yeah. Yeah. Yep. He, he had a whole thing just yeah, now. Yeah, just a whole introduction, <laughs> but it's fine. 2013. It's fine. insulted his movie. He's not listening to me anymore. Next week. Okay. And until then, the basement is going dark.